Hey guys, Jerry Button coming at you with another fantastic Pixelmator tutorial. I'm going to show you how to blur the background of an image. This tutorial comes as a request, one of many, from a YouTube user named Key Tux, aka Steven. Dude, this tutorial is for you. Keep in mind that this is not very hard to do. I'm not questioning your your skills, of course, but this is not very hard. So if you're in for an, if you're hoping for an advanced tutorial within this, it's not very hard. It's pretty easy. Just a few click, 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 blur, then you're done. Blurred image, maybe make some black and white. Ready? Let's get started. All right, when you're going to do this type of tutorial, or rather just do this type of edit, you're going to want to have an image in mind that you want to edit already. So I'm not going to create a new canvas. I'm just going to open an existing image. So click open an existing image, and then it'll browse around for what photo you want. Since we use OS X, because this is a Pixelmator tutorial, you can easily go down to your media link down here on the bottom of the Finder browser, click Photos, and then just navigate to where you want. The photo I want is within Eastern Harbor Breton. I'm going to make this a bit bigger and a bit wider so we can see more photos. I'm going to center it so it looks more aesthetically nice. And I'm going to scroll down to the photo I want to use, which is this one of my wife in front of the woods by a lighthouse. Now you can't see the lighthouse because it's behind these trees. So it's a bit too big. So get your move tool, V, and then go to image, image size, and size it down to make the height about 700. And then just click OK. Now we'll have a smaller image to work with. And now we got it fully zoomed in. I did that by double clicking on the icon right here. That will zoom it right to the full size. I'm going to make the canvas a bit smaller. I'm going to move it to about right here. Now, we don't really need two options, or do we? No. We Actually, yes, we do. So, grab, now what you're going to do is you're going to call this the base layer. Base. Hit OK. Alright, now we're going to blur what's behind Shara. To do this, we need a selection tool. So hit L on your keyboard, and it'll bring up the freehand lasso. Now, if you want more precise looking curves over here, what you can do is you can hit L again, and you'll get the polygon lasso. You can hit Command-2 on your keyboard to bring up the tool options, and you can switch here if you want. Once again, that command is Command-2. Hides it, brings it up. Simple. So I'm going to use the freehand lasso with the multiple selection box here selected. This will allow me to add selections later if I'm not pleased with what I create. Then just hide it out and make a selection around the object you want to do. Or, I mean, the object you want to make more focused. Haha, <laughs> sorry. Now, I've made the selection around Char. It's not very hard. You just click with the mouse, drag around, and let go when you want to make the selection. So, this is the selection we've, I've made, rather. And I'm going to go to Edit, Refine Selection. Then, with your feather, make the feather uh, towards... Bring it up depending on how much you think you might need. I'm going to go right up to about 70. You can bring in the size if you want, or you can make it bigger. You can expand the feather. That's about, that's about right there. I'll actually make it a bit smaller. And then you can hit smooth, but uh, I find that does not do much for me. And then just click OK. This is now feather the area in which you selected. So if I were to copy it, you'd get a nice feathered edge. Get your marquee tool, and then go to edit, inverse. I just used the marquee tool for my own personal reasons. You don't need to if you don't want to. Go to filter, blur, that's strange. Why isn't it? Oh, yeah, I don't have a layer selected. Sorry, guys. Go to Base, and go to Filter, Blur, and then we'll say Zoom. And let's see here. Uh, what settings should we use? Okay, we're going to use just a base. Just click it once to make it one blur. And the great thing about this Zoom Blur is you can control the way it directions, or the direction in which it flows. So I'm going to move the selection... Uh, so you can increase it more if you want to see what way the selection is moving. So I'm going to just move it, uh, let's see, uh, sorry, click, ah, there we go. So the selections, uh, that's good right there. Drag it to the bottom so it looks like it's going outwards. Oh, and then click OK. Then go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then just hit it twice. And then select away, and there you have it. It looks like you've blurred the background behind a person, or an, ob <clears throat> sorry, an object. Now, one thing to keep in mind that this is not the exact way people do it. There are much better ways, much digital SLR cameras 
autofocus certain things in the object and will blur the background behind it anyway. A good example is pretty much the macro shot. Another way you can refine the selection around your person is grabbing the blur tool, which is right here. You can click on your keyboard and you just click it. And you can go around the edges if you're not satisfied with your original selection. You know, and it, well, it does pretty much what the, what the name says. It blurs whatever it touches. And then there you have it. It's not very hard to blur up an image like this. You know, I did it in a few short steps. And, of course, you've done it in a few short steps. And there's a lot more you can do with this image after you've blurred the background. You can desaturate it, make it black and white. Or you could cleverly add a tiny, tiny little monster that will surely come ashore and not destroy a certain little town. Well guys, that's it for the tutorial. I hope you might have learned something today. This is not really an advanced tutorial. It was done out of the kindness of a request. He took the time to ask me a question and ask for help, so I responded. I hope he learned something from this. Once again, I'm not really showing you the exact way it's done. Just a few ways you can get the ball rolling. Guys, thanks for watching. Because I know this question will be asked once, twice, maybe three or four times, I'm going to answer it right here now at the end of the video to see how many people actually watched. The wallpaper is from a web blog called Turnspot, and the doc is from DeviantArt. It's up to you to find those two resources. I am not a provider of wallpapers, docs, and icons. I'm a provider solely for tutorials, and maybe in the future, stock photos, but I'm not sure about that yet. Well, I know for a fact I'll be giving out renders too. Thank you for watching, guys.